the ski party. The following unusual event happened to several staff members and their families of both the British and American embassies in Oslo in Norway. It was the spring of 1950 where they were all together in a ski party in a valley near the Oslo Fjord. The story was recalled by Brigadier K. Traceda from the British Embassy. The party was skiing in near perfect conditions with fine weather and excellent snow conditions on land that was attached to an old farmhouse at the bottom of the valley. After the group of skiers had finished for the day and night was drawing in, the party was slowly making their way back to the car park which was located about 183 metres from the farmhouse. The road to the car park was very straight, with good views of at least half a kilometre in either direction, as the light was still quite good, so if anyone was approaching the party, they would have easily been seen from all directions. The first of the skiers to reach the car park were the Brigadier and an American colleague, who upon arriving at their cars, immediately started to remove their ski equipment. It was at this point that they were suddenly accosted by a lady with a strong Scottish accent who demanded to know why they'd been skiing on her land. The woman was described as being tall and elderly and was dressed in what could only be described as old-fashioned. Her suit appeared to be made from herringbone tweed with a long skirt and a Norfolk jacket, which is a loose-belted, single-breasted tweed jacket with box pleats on the back and front, which were popular from the 1870s to the 1930s. She wore lace-up boots and a flat round cap. The woman was extremely angry, especially after Brigadier admitted that yes, they had been skiing over the land, which the woman claimed was her land. At this stage, the Brigadier's wife had joined them, where the three of them were now being thoroughly chastised where she regarded them as trespassers and ordered them off her land and never return. By now the party was totally bewildered, as they believed that in Norway in winter, skiing was permitted in most areas. At this, they apologised to the lady for trespassing on her land, where she then turned and left. Eventually, the remaining skiers had reached the car park and were asking why they were all standing around looking confused. The brigadier and his companions then explained to them the drama that had just ensued, and that the elderly lady had seriously berated them for skiing on her land. Then one of the other team members asked, what old lady? At this point, everyone was turning their heads around, including the brigadier and his companions, and could not see the woman anywhere. They looked down the road and believed that the woman could not have disappeared from view in that short period of time. Everyone searched the area but could find no sign of her. It was at this point that one of them suggested they must have been conversing with a ghost, especially after he described to us what she was wearing, which seemed more like clothing from around the late 19th century. Now their curiosity had been piqued, they did not jump into their cars and leave, but decided to solve the mystery. They then headed to the farmhouse in search of the elderly lady, but found that the house was occupied by a young couple and their two small children. They asked the couple whether an elderly lady was residing with them, but they replied that they did not know anyone who fitted her description. However, the young farmer did tell them that the farmhouse was once owned by his great-grandfather, who lived there with his wife, who originally came from Scotland. Unfortunately, they had no photographs from which they could identify her. The farmer did say that they were free to ski on the land whenever they wanted. So, this eerie experience asked many questions in that three people were witness to this ghostly encounter or shared hallucination. The elderly woman could not have been a residual haunting where she was enacting a scene from the past with three people from the past because they were able to have a conversation with her. There is no doubt that the three skiers had an interaction with an elderly woman and the question to be asked is, was their confrontation taking place in her period of time or was she interacting in their current period of time? The Peasants' Revolt The following incident took place in December 1942 during World War II. Mrs B. McDougall was serving in the Women's Auxiliary Air Force and along with two other colleagues had been posted to Abingdon Air Force Base, Oxfordshire in South East England. They arrived at Abingdon Station on the way to the base and had to start walking as they realised they had missed the transport that was to have driven them there. Along the way, they decided to rest for a few minutes under a bridge near the River Ock, which was a tributary of the River Thames. All of a sudden, Mrs McDoodle found herself amongst a group of peasants who appeared to be in the middle of a revolt. She found herself squashed in the middle of a crowd of people who were hurrying under the bridge. 
She was now extremely hot and was feeling the heat and sweat of the people who were pressed up close to her. Their clothes were rough and very coarse and she was absolutely terrified and her heart was beating fast. As she came out the other side of the bridge, she found herself back in her own time where the incident appeared to have taken only a few seconds. After researching her terrifying event under the bridge, she came to the conclusion that she had been caught up in what appeared to be part of Wat Tyler Patton's revolt of the 14th century. Walter Watt Tyler was the leader of the 1381 Peasants' Revolt in England. He marched a group of rebels from Canterbury to London to oppose the institution of a poll tax and to demand economic and social reforms. It appears Mrs B. McDoodle had been momentarily caught up in a time slip from the 14th century that seemed to have affected only her and not her colleagues, who were totally unaware of the drama that had taken place with their comrade. 